we present to you Dr. Boyd Graves. Thank you all very much. And certainly, um, after last evening, and uh, the, the level of professionalism of the people here in New Jersey, uh, unmatched. We have been around this country and around the world. Uh, but the level of professionalism and the, the events of uh, the last maybe 36 hours show that we have something here uh, in New Jersey. And indeed, New Jersey is becoming the first state to address the issue of the synthetic origin of HIV and AIDS. Indeed, the documentation is overwhelming. And I'm just going to speak for a few moments and allow those of you to have questions to then present them. But what we are saying here by this press conference today is that indeed, if there was a federal virus development program that preceded HIV and AIDS, that program needs to be reviewed. Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? If there was a federal virus development program that preceded the greatest onslaught of death in the history of the world, then why don't we review that program? Well, you know why? First, we have to recognize that there was indeed a federal virus program, and we can do that, and we can do that right now. We're doing it here in New Jersey. The program is right here in front of this table, the virus program in the United States of America. This is the program booklet from 1978, the last of the booklets. We had HIV and AIDS in 1979. I believe that is a correct statement. Is that a correct statement? That in the late 1970s, something began enveloping the people of Africa, and something began developing the white promiscuous homosexuals of New York at the same time. An earthquake with two epicenters. Well, what is the answer for that? The answer for that is that if you have an earthquake that has two epicenters, you have someone behind the curtain manipulating something. And how do we know that? We know that because there is a blueprint. It is, if you can hold that for me in some fashion, uh, just uh, someone yeah. Here is the blueprint. The blueprint for HIV and AIDS. It is the 1971 research logic of the U.S. Special Virus Program. Here is the blueprint. And the reason why this document is so significant, because it shows the mindset of my government to design, produce, and proliferate a special virus, a virus that only targets certain persons, as is evidenced by the epidemiology. The U.S. Special Virus is the U.S. HIV program. The reason why we had two earthquakes or two epicenters at the same time was because here's the final phase, the clinical trials. It was placed in the smallpox vaccines that went to Africa. But as smallpox ended, HIV and AIDS began. Every epidemiology that we have regarding the beginning of HIV and AIDS shows that as smallpox ended, HIV and AIDS began in mass in Africa. And that defies the fact that one African and one monkey and one African and one monkey in that syndrome. HIV and AIDS began in mass in the late 1970s as a result of the U.S. Special Virus Program and the complementation of that vaccine with this special virus that shows the development of HIV over a period from 1962 to 1978. And thanks for holding that. I don't want you to stand up all the way. The, the point is, these 15, there are 15 of these progress reports of the U.S. Special Virus Program. These progress reports need to be reviewed by the best and the finest medical doctors and scientists in the world. We demand it. We demand it. How dare you have a federal virus development program that precedes the greatest onslaught of murder in the history of the world, and you don't want to acknowledge the program, and you certainly don't want to review it, the people demand it. We demand a review of the U.S. Special Virus Program, and I'll address any question on this issue, and we will debate any person in this country or around the world on this issue. This federal program lies at the heart of HIV and AIDS. It needs to be reviewed. I hope you join me in, in, in that at night. Thank you very much. Here's our second point. Here's our second point. If there is a cure for AIDS that has been patented by the United States and it is still on the shelf, that cure needs to begin to be placed into clinical trials. Am I correct? correct. So if the United States has already patented the cure for AIDS, then we want to get it off the shelf. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. The cure for AIDS is U.S. patent number 56769777. Let me say it again. That's 56769777. 
Go to www.uspto.gov and put that number in. I challenge anyone to do that in the next five minutes. Run to the library and come back here and say it doesn't exist because it does exist. Here is the cure for AIDS that has been patented by this government in 1997. It will be 10 years that the cure for AIDS has been on the shelf. We want the clinical trials of the cure for AIDS to start today. Um, you know, our angle here is that if we put aside all of the chatter, all that we thought we knew about HIV and AIDS, and that would include that French Gallo Montagne uh, thing, what we find is that let us clear our mind. Let us review what is in these progress reports and then make our assumptions. Because on this issue, what you will find is that is just a subterfuge. This thing between the Gallo and the United States and the French, mm -hmm. Do you find Dr. Robert Gallo intimately familiar with the progress reports of the development of AIDS? Dr. Robert Gallo was a project director for the development of HIV and AIDS. He, is, he has been critical in the development of HIV and AIDS, not in finding out what HIV and AIDS is, in making HIV and AIDS. And so then you go to the French, well, Dr. Graves, are the French uh, incriminated by the progress reports? So what you're asking them, so is, is Dr. Montagne his name in these progress reports? Yes, it is. This is a concerted effort by the governments of the world under the World Health Organization to reduce the populations primarily of the third world, as is evidenced by a number of U.S. government documents, particularly National Security Study Memorandum 200 from uh, December of 1974 that uh, Dr. Henry Kissinger presented at the World Population Conference in Bucharest, Romania in 1974. The outline for Reducing the population of the third world because, in essence, as a threat to the United States and the Aryan race, in essence, but also to reduce the population of the third world vis-a-vis -vis a means other than the atomic bomb, which would also destroy the infrastructure of Africa, but then a means that destroys the people of Africa so Africa's resources are left for the United States and, and intact for the United States. These are in writing, NASA Security Study Memorandum, NSSM 200, uh, represents the most graphic description of the U.S.'s plan to depopulate the third world. Now, how does the homosexuals get in there? I'd be happy to answer that if that's the first of your question. Yes, sir. Uh, what they figured out was that in 1973, the conference was in Asilomar, California, A-S-I-L-O-M-A-R. The Asilomar Conference in 1973 chose homosexuals, I don't know if they chose specifically white homosexuals, but it appears that they did, as a test group to counter the reaction from Africa that, that we were only doing this to their society. Mm -hmm. In NSSM 200, the African leaders balked at the fact that the United States is getting ready to do to Africa's citizens something that it wasn't willing to do to its own white citizens here in the United States. So they specifically recruited 1,086 white homosexuals to take an experimental hepatitis B vaccine. All 1,086 men died of AIDS. How are you? I'm just, I'm looking at the um, copies of the patent and I see words like production, isolation, um, detection, but, and I'm not a doctor, can you just translate for me how this translates into a cure? Or which patent number are you reading? Which patent number should be? Yeah? I'm looking for it to say. Because I think what you're reading is, uh, uh, just on what you just said, you know.